She doesn't want to exert any more energy than she has to. But she can kind of close that gap so she can get here. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, she fell. Didn't seem to bother her any. All right. And Nick right about now is probably thinking, catch it already, so I can stop running. <laughs> So if a tiger possesses something, like if you were to possess that, we would have to try another toy, something that's bigger, bigger than something else. But tigers, for the most part, will sit on whatever they're protecting, tell you to back off. Uh-oh! Looks like Nicky Flair went, uh-oh. <laughs> Not tamed by any means, she has all her instincts, it's just a matter of us keeping track of those instincts. Any given instinct that she's working on at a particular time, she always has to be aware of the cat, the environment, everything that's going on with them. To be able to read them properly. Whoa! To read them properly. And it's extremely important to spend a lot of time with them. The more time you can spend with them developing a relationship, the more they look at you like a friend. You know, they don't want to harm you because, hey, wait, that's my friend. I really don't want to harm my friend. And sometimes when we're working with the cat, you get accustomed or used to, you know, going with a particular cat. And, you know, they kind of seem laid back and such. And so we do have to introduce a new person. Then we see how laid back they're not because a new person starts there. And they want to test that new person, jump on them, grab them, bite them, see if they can knock you down. And it all depends on the personality. Whoa. Every cat, wow. Every cat's an individual. They have instincts, they have intellect, they have feelings for us and one another. But they all have different personalities. You know, what toys she likes, somebody else might not. She's in her canoe. Yeah, oh, she's in the canoe. <laughs> she can get up close. And I understand that different relationships with different cats. And sometimes when we introduce a new person, one cat might be a little rougher, another one might say, oh, cool, you know, new friends. And it goes fairly easy. But we also have to watch, uh, both Webb and Nick are new to this. Uh oh, get out of the way, I'm trying to come through. Whoa. Two of our older cats, uh, that chain here, uh, 11 years old, and when we first introduced Webb and Nick to them, uh, Akash and Liberty, first they were like, oh, okay, you know, new friend, that's okay. You have to watch some of them because they'll think about their opportunities to take advantage. So they're like, oh, okay, new friend, as long as there's four people standing around, they're all like, okay, no problem. We get here, and a cat all of a sudden would be alone with, say, Nick or Webb, and all of a sudden they're like, this is my opportunity. Everybody's far away. Now I'm going to take you up on top of this. You can tell that little lion still crying in the background. He loves to lay so much here. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he does cry when they're separated, but also we've caught that lion sitting on top of this tiger sucking on her ears. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Isn't that funny how she has to whoa, get all the balloons before she leaves it. Wow! And this little girl just doesn't seem to tire. She was a water baby from the time we got her. Some of the cats, the tigers, when we bring them over here, it'll take them a little time. Even though they may like the water in their habitat, uh, typically the ponds and such they have in their habitats are very shallow. So they come in here and they start to swim across, they can't touch the bottom, that kind of panics them, they'll get out. Not her. <laughs> she was in a fairly deep tub when we first acquired her. All right, big finale, guys. Did Nick make 